Alright, I leveled Harwell up to level 5. Let's look around our throne room. Lander. A tall young man of about 17 stands before you. He's athletic and has composure and bearing. Hint of nobility. As you approach, Lander stops studying his fingernails, his broad smile revealing brilliant white teeth. Oh, greetings! You certainly seem to be in high spirits. Truly high spirits indeed. Just this morning, I received news from Brevoy. My illustrious mother, may the gods prolong her years, is terribly upset by the disappearance of yours truly. Lander's smile twists into a sneer. She's dispatched search parties to the neighboring provinces. Discreetly, of course. She fears whatever scandal might arise due to my absence. Ah, well, it's not the first time she's gone to such lengths. Um, any advice for me, Lander? I've met Keston Garris before. He was an amiable, gregarious man. Not at all like he is now. Ah, uh, now he's a broken man, and I don't consider it wise to trust broken people with important positions. Well, all right. How do you like being the regent so far? It gives me great satisfaction, Your Grace, the very thought of how much I influence the barony. Ah, but you must be asking after my responsibilities. All matters are well in hand, and by no means do they hamper my other affairs. Um, alright, we'll speak later. Lindsay, how are you doing over there? How is the bard? How goes the barding? Just a moment, I've got something. Lindsay quickly scribbles something in her notebook, then raises her eyes and smiles at you. Hi! Uh... Tell me about that book you're writing. What is there to tell? We've been... You've seen some of my rough draft already, haven't you? It's a book about you and your adventures. I am writing the whole truth, just as it happened. Well, the whole artistic truth. You know, no glory, no story. Why are you writing it? What's the point? When I was at the Academy, Eobald the Insightful began his literature course with the question, What is a person? And he answered, A person is a storytelling animal. Our world does not consist of things. All these woods, seas, and cities, it consists of stories about those things. The stories we tell to ourselves and to each other. Just think about it. Centuries will pass, and there will be no me and no you. All your subjects will be long gone. But you and I will live on in people's memories and influence their deeds, thanks to this very book. No offense, but your command of language is not that good. The truth doesn't hurt me. Who do you think my most severe critic is? That's right, it's me. This is my first real book, and I have much yet to learn. But don't you worry, I will do your feats justice. And if I put my foot in my mouth here and there, then we can print a second edition, revised and corrected. Well, your book is full of inconsistencies. Well, yes, I, I can admit that. Sometimes one has to bend a few details for the sake of dramatic effect. It's called poetic truth. I write about everything as if I saw it with my own eyes, even parts of the adventure that I wasn't around for. But I do always carefully question everyone who was with you at the time. Think of it as a general picture. In the end, you're the hero of this book, and I am just the storyteller. So, uh, what kind of character am I? In books, everything is simple. These are the heroes, and those are the villains. In life, of course, it's completely different. You have to make difficult decisions, and I don't always agree with you. But that's what makes you a complex, multifaceted character. You are like a force of nature, wild and unpredict unpredictable. You're full of surprises. I doubt I could make up a protagonist. I doubt I could make up a protagonist like you, even if I tried very hard. Wow, it's hard to speak really fast. Lindsay speaks really fast, so I'm trying to talk really fast to get through her lines. Uh, well, how do you feel about me reading your work in progress? 
Well, these are only drafts, but of course, you're welcome to read them. Just keep in mind that even if you don't like what I write about you, wh what I write about, I won't change a single letter, so don't even ask. Hmm. I, I have no interest in censorship. Any stories about me are welcome as long as they're interesting. <laughs> no, I'm not going to make up any fiction about you. And why would I? I wouldn't be able to invent half the adventures you keep getting yourself into. Well, I'd uh, ask about anything. I'd be happy to chat all day. Well, what's the deal with that ring you always wear on your finger? I hadn't noticed it before, but I see it there now. Uh-oh, this. Lindsay holds her arm for you to get a clear view of the ring. It was a gift to me from my first teacher. It's magical, imbued by the powers of Shaleen, no less. When I get myself in trouble, it transports me to a safe spot. So, please don't be angry with me if I suddenly disappear from a fight. I'll wait for you here, I promise. Oh, okay, well, I, I have to go. Wow, you can tell them to leave and never come back. Uh, I have to go now. Bye, Lindsay. Just don't leave without me. Of course, I could just write whatever you tell me, but if I wanted to stay cooped up in a dusty room, I'd still be sleeping through lectures at the Academy. And, of course, the Academy is uh, Pitax's Academy of Grand Arts. What do the guards have to say? Long live the Baron. That's me. Don't you forget it. Keston. How may I serve you, Your Grace? Keston nods at you, pauses a moment, then bows awkwardly. Uh, just out of curiosity, what did you do to be exiled? I believe I have a right to know, since... You're working for me now and all. Fair enough. For a Goress, the prosperity of the house and the honor of the name stands above all else. And I... I was betrothed to a widow from another noble house. This union was of great importance to the family. However, three months before the wedding, I met a commoner girl, gentle and pure, and we fell in love. I would have rather died than leave my Tanya. So I decided to break off the engagement with my noble bride. I could never have expected what would follow. Well, are you, uh, you're one of the, uh, one of the, one of the Stark kids, aren't you? You're Rob Stark, aren't you? My father was furious. I'd set a pointless love affair above the interests of the house. He expelled me from the family in order to leave our lands under threat of death. And Tanya, her mother was seriously ill, and she stayed behind to care for her rather than follow me into exile. Thus, I was on my own, disgraced without a name, and without love. Well, it's better than what happened to Rob Stark. Count yourself lucky. Don't imagine that I ask for pity. Everyone gets what they deserve. <laughs> Keston remarks in a somber tone. Well, you're quite depressing, so I'll see you later. Farewell. Wait, if I were to offer you a public position, what job would you like to do? I believe I can manage to uphold the law. Being a warden would suit me well. All right, well, bye. So... Wow, what are these? What are those? Uh, manage kingdom affairs. How do I get back to, like, questing and stuff? How do I break out of my... Out of my kingdom? Start the rank up project. The advisor and the baron will spend 14 days on a special project to increase the rank of a respective stat. You can find one such project under the projects tab. Assign an advisor and start the project to increase the rank of a stat. I feel like I already did that, didn't I? So I, I did this, I granted the Baron, I mean I, the Baron, granted an advisor an audience to discuss a matter at hand. 
I successfully talked to Harim. And now... How do I get back? There's the map. Tuskdale. Nothing is built yet. Can I enter Tuskdale? You may construct buildings to increase your barony stats. Each building has a cost and a construction time. To start construction, select a building you need from the list on the right. Place it in an empty slot. Wow. This is way more complicated than I expected it to be. The village of Tuskdale. Uh, okay. Tuskdale. Looks placid. We can build a barracks, a brewery. I feel like they need a dance hall. How do we do this? Oh, we drag and drop. The center of Tuskdale will be a dance hall. Just by the road there. Add the outskirts. Begin construction of a new building. Okay, I... Okay. I was supposed to do that, it turns out. Annexation. I've always objected to something, 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 and then it disappeared, and I didn't see it anymore. I don't get to see my journal here. Problems to solve and opportunities to seize occur from time to time in your domain. These events may increase or decrease your barony stats. Don't forget to look them up. All the current events are listed at the bottom of the screen. Every event has a difficulty level. To resolve the event successfully, the advisor must roll a number higher than the difficulty level of the event. Okay, I don't see any events. Oh, I have a rank up. Spend two weeks resolving the loyalty of citizens in the barony. I will choose an advisor to support the counselor's endeavors. Well, I have one choice, and that's Tristian. Let's begin. Harwell is occupied with the project. Support the counselor's endeavors. Uh-oh, I have to get to the bald hilltop now. Every event can resolve in one of the four ways. Disaster, failure, success, or triumph. The outcome may affect the barony stats. There are two types of events, problems and opportunities. If a problem event ends with failure, it decreases your stats. If it ends with success, it has no effect. Succeeding at an opportunity event will increase your stats, and it will normally not affect them if the outcome is a failure. So complicated. Success! Loyalty! Reached rank 2, thanks to the Counselor and the Baron. The subject's loyalty to their ruler has reached new heights. Hooray! New merchants have arrived in the capital. Traders have already set up their stalls and are waiting for new customers. Economy, plus 2. Booyah! A proposal for cooperation. Opportunity has arrived. Three merchants from Absalom arrived in the region. They're ready to do business with the barony if their conditions are met. Failure! Oh no! Unfortunately, negotiations between the regent and the merchants from Absalom led to nothing. It was a failed opportunity. Lander! You've let me down, Lander! Do that again and perhaps I will... I will see you in my laboratory on the lab table. Esvanki's offer. Esvanki Keeg, High Priest of Aristol from Restoff, has a strong interest in spreading the Stag God's faith across the region. 
Success. Harim has negotiated success. The first shrine in your capital will be built free of charge. And plundering the temple of the elk. Amiri met with success. All valuables from the temple of the elk have been moved to the treasury. 150 BP. And prevents future restoration of the temple. Awesome. Now... Uh, how... How do we get to, um... Okay, the bald hilltop. The rumors surrounding the bald hilltop prove true. The barony has been flooded with monstrous spiders attacking the locals and slaughtering the cattle. Reports indicate that the huge arachnids spread a ghastly disease that weakens the victim with fever and coats their bodies with blisters. This invasion has to be stopped before panic and infection ravage the stolen lands. Um... Okay. Requires one day to solve. I thought I was supposed to go there. Should be attended before one rova. Which is how far away? I don't know how far away that is. Um, well, I guess Tristian has a plus eight. He doesn't seem like the right person to deal with a plague, though. What is, uh... What does a crisis point do? DC 15. Oh, I see. So if I use... If I use a crisis point, my success chance goes from 70% up to 95%. Well, 70%. I like those odds. I think Tristian can handle it. Oh, and now we wait. Seriously, though, how do we, like, go places and do things? How do I... How do I... What happens if I click on... Oh, that's Tuskdale again. The Hands of Gold. What? I don't even know what is going on anymore. There's a troll invasion. Do I do I ever get to like walk around and fight monsters anymore in this game? <laughs> Is that over now? <laughs> um, news has arrived from the largest observatory in the Five Kings Mountains. The enchanted lens of their main telescope broke. The destruction of such a powerful artifact caused a gust of enchanted wind, which is now moving towards the region of the barony. You should seize this opportunity. Harim, handle this... Handle this at once. I will give you one crisis point to give your success chance to get your success chance up to 80%. Start. And we also have a troll invasion. Keston arrived at the castle with reports of strange trolls swarming the Narl marches. This event can only be resolved by visiting the throne room. Your Grace, I... Keston has a troubled look on his face. I fear there's another matter that requires your attention. There have been reports, many of them from settlements across the Narl Marches. There are trolls in the forest, seemingly hordes of them. Rumors claim they're more than the typical savage beast. They almost seem to show reason and tactics. They form groups, attack all at once, plunder the villages, carry away the peasants. Even stranger, kobolds have been spotted among their ranks, when usually they would be attacked on sight. 
I'm not certain any of this is reliable. Fear builds mountains of molehills. Some of the rumors even say these trolls carried torches and burned down houses, seemingly unafraid of open flames. It's entirely possible the rest of the reports could be exaggerated as well. The common folk will hardly need any... The common folk will hardly heed any simple exhortation. Someone will need to go to the Gnarl Marches to investigate the matter. I was considering the matter when it hit me. What if you were to take on this investigation yourself, Your Grace? Uh... 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 Well... The Baron's... Well... You believe trudging through swamps and chasing rumors to be part of a baron's duties? Uh, forgive me, Your Grace. However, if this problem isn't handled now, by next month there may be no one left to save. Keston shifts uneasily. So if you do decide to go, please remember that trolls can only be killed with fire or acid. Troll trouble. Trolls who didn't fear fire? That sounded terrible, and dangerous, and terribly dangerous. If we couldn't rein them in, our young barony would be eaten up in a snap. Well, let's go handle it. How do we go handle it? Do we hit the exit button? Nope. <laughs> this is my bedchamber, where I rest, apparently. So, um... How... Wait, do I go this way? Wait, there's a big map here. Wait, let's go out this door. Ruling a kingdom is a serious task. Make sure you visit your capital at least once a month. Or... Hello, my savior. You asked if we'd meet again. And here I am. The savory aroma of herbs and flowers is the first thing that lets you know that your longtime acquaintance is here. The nymph looks at you in a strange way, like she's never looked at you before. I see your fate has changed since last we met. Now you are the ruler who will determine the destiny of these lands. I am their living heart. The whisper of the wind, the strength of rivers, the luxuriant growth of the meadows. Do you wish to touch this power? Ah. Uh... I will show you a place where we can finally meet in flesh, you and I. Deep in the woods, there is an old mossy ruins long abandoned, nearly swallowed by the thicket. There is an old tree growing among the stones in the yard, which I remember as a seed. A shadow under its green crown I call my verdant chambers. Visit me there, my lord, and come alone. A nymph's reward awaits you. Well, I was, uh... Wait, I wish to ask you something. Forgive me. Nymphs are not made for cities. The noise and vanity of human settlements vex me. I will answer all your questions, but there, in the silence of my asylum. Well, all right. I was happy to help. I'll see you in the Verdant Chambers, then. So long. I will await you there as the ground waits for spring under the heavy winter snow. Very melodramatic, but all right. In defeating the Stag Lord, 
We not only completed the Aldori's task, but saved a beautiful nymph, the guardian of the bloom, who no one besides our daring leader had seen. A well-deserved reward awaits our hero. She didn't invite anyone else. Looks like the nymph is only interested in offering her reward to the Baron. Oh, I don't like this suggestion. If I were in the Baron's shoes, I'd definitely stock up on invisibility potions or some other means to avoid trouble. <laughs> Wait. We are receiving alarming news from every corner of this vast barony. Here, there, and everywhere, rampant hordes of trolls are wreaking havoc. The desperate people cry out for a protector, begging us to come and fend off these ravaging monsters. Of course, it's the sacred duty of the Sovereign to locate the hiding places of these foul foes and give them bloody hell. To deal with the trolls, we must first learn more about them. According to Keston, the troll lair is located somewhere in the Gnarl Marches. Hmm. You know, perhaps... Maybe we can figure out Let's go see if we can find Davik Nettle and finish this riverbed nightmare. What are these horrible dreams that plague our leader each night? What terrible malefaction occurred on the shores of the Shrike River? And has my book suddenly turned into a heroic epic from a heroic epic into a horror story? Our leader can't get any rest at night. And it's not due to bedbugs in his bedroll. As soon as he closes his eyes, a nightmare begins tormenting him. A bloated, drowned corpse repeating the same words over and over. Shrike River! We should go there and discover the source of these terrible dreams. So, the one sending us those nightmares was Davik Nettle. Formerly a ferryman, now a creepy corpse eager to get revenge upon the stag lord. But that's why we came in the first place, to end the bandit's atrocities. So there was no need to spook us with bad dreams. Well, at least now we won't be pacifying the... We won't just be pacifying the region. We'll also be helping a poor soul find rest. Yeah, let's do that. If we can figure out how to do that. So I... I'm sure I'm going to need to level up my party before I do anything, though. So what are these places? The house, and another house, and the throne room. There's Verdal and Hasuf. Who are these people? Oh, they're vendors. Let me see. Um, I don't need them just yet. Wow, it's been another half hour and I have done nothing. I think it's been about two and a half hours of game time since the last time I was on a map battling enemies. What what happens if I leave this map? <gasps> Aha! I can... Wait, can I... Hmm... How do I level up my party? How can I level up my party before I leave? Yes! I can. Alright, so... So I'm gonna have to do that between videos. Because that's gonna take a long, long time. But, before we head off to look for trolls or... To the Shrike River, let's look around the village here. Let's check out this house. Hello! Citizen, I'm your Baron. You seem to be ignoring me. The Baron himself! Greetings, Your Grace! Alright. Well, bye. Nothing interesting happening there. Clear. Greetings, citizens! It's you! Good day, Your Grace! All right, well, carry on. More citizens. Hey, it's a tavern. The tavern is empty. 
No one is in the tavern. Upstairs is empty as well. Very exciting. Exciting stuff. Must be too early. Oh, look. There's Arsino. A woman in rich gold embroidered clothes greets you with a polite bow. Her eyes, the color of molten gold, shine brightly in her dusky face. Greetings, noble ruler of these lands. My name is Arsino. I'm a messenger from the Temple of Abadar in Absalom, and I came here assuming the citizens of your young barony could use the services of a priest. As you know, Abadar, the god of cities, law, merchants, and wealth, is also called the god of walls and ditches in the Eastern Dragon Empires, is known to be a patient deity, maintaining a strong neutral stance in his actions. He sets forth to expand civilization and order among the peoples of Golarion. Golarion. And of course we know Absalon has been the city at the center of the world for more than 4,000 years. All right, well, that's interesting, Arsino. Arsino stares at you for a moment, then adds with a noticeable warmth, I'm glad to meet another person marked by celestial blood here. Oh, yes, I, uh, you're an Asima, if I'm not mistaken. I suppose it's easy to tell, isn't it? Yes, I'm an Asima, though I'm not sure how or when the blood of Celestials appeared in my family. Among all my relatives and known ancestors, I'm the only one who inherited it. I must admit, I'm glad this lot fell to me. It draws more attention to me, a useful trait for a priest who wishes to gather a congregation. Well, how did you come to be in my barony? That's a long story, and not a terribly exciting one. Well, can you spruce it up? We are telling a story here. All right, well, I was born and raised in Absalom. But, you know, Absalom, the city at the center of the world. But I saw little point in staying there. What's the purpose in promoting the faith of Abadar in a city already so large and well-developed? No, I was drawn to backwater places where civilization was just beginning to emerge. It gives me such joy to see the first stones of a new settlement being laid or to see wilderness that once harbored monsters and criminals become a safe, cozy home for people. I've devoted my life to my travels, choosing to visit places like your barony. Allow me to say it's a place after my own heart. A city growing over the remains of a bandit lord's lair is exactly the sort of triumph of civilization Abadar prescribes. I hope my skills as a priest will be of service to these lands and their denizens. Well, what services do you offer, exactly? I can sell you various divine spell scrolls. They're quite useful, even if you don't have anyone in your party who can read them. While you're in this settlement, or indeed any place with a cleric, with a cleric willing to help, you need only open your bag and choose the scroll you wish to cast. I'll be happy to read it for you. However, take care out there in the wilderness. A scroll is useless without someone who can read it. To use a scroll on your journeys, you'll need a spellcaster whose magical training covers such spells, or someone skilled in magical devices. Well, that's very interesting. Uh, what can you tell me about Abadar? With pleasure I'll speak about Abadar. Abadar is the god of cities, law, merchants, and wealth. As I mentioned before, the core of his teachings is simple. Law and order allow civilization to develop, which allows people to live in peace and prosperity. If Aristotle favors old customs, small settlements, and simple trades like hunting, then Abadar patronizes development, complex trades, order, and entrepreneurship. Each priest of Abadar finds something personal in serving him. Some believe that law is the main aspect of their faith, and they guard it zealously. Others put the well-being of their society above all. I personally, f I personally follow Abadar's teachings that say civilization must penetrate the wildest savage lands and help people live in comfort and safety. 
If you're so eager to help the citizens, what do you charge for your services? It's part of Abadar's philosophy. The rules of trade and exchange developed for a reason. They help bring order to our world, and they mustn't be broken without need. The opportunity to get what one desires for no effect has a corrupting effect on souls. Well, I could actually use this help of a cleric. The previous two clerics in my party have not been very good, I'll be perfectly honest with you. That is precisely why I am here. Oh, well, I thought maybe she would join my party. Thought that's maybe what she was asking for. Hey, can you, like, heal? Somebody? Uh... Huh. Okay, this is not working the way I thought it would. Shared stash. Okay. How do I heal these people? I suppose I need a scroll. What scroll do I need? Um, Death's Door. If they're hit points, then they're, this condition can be removed by visiting a healer or by greater restoration. Oh, okay. I knew if I clicked that X up there, I was going to leave this screen entirely. Can you, uh... Can you help my uh, folks here? I mean, I guess I can just try to buy a greater restoration spell. Scroll of restoration. Restoration cures all temporary ability damage and restores all points permanently drained. It also eliminates any fatigue or exhaustion. Is that the one I want? Do I have enough gold for this? It's 840 gold. I need two of those. Ah, a scroll of resurrection. Okay, so even if a character's killed, I can get them back. Okay, so... Oh, I wanted to look at... Wow, I have so much to do. I picked up so many magic items I have to distribute. And they were all identified. I didn't realize this until I looked back at the video, but... As I was putting them away, Jathal was identifying them. <laughs> So I don't actually need to identify them. I got a Agile Light Pick. I got a Greatsword plus one. Heavy Shield plus one. Ring of Protection plus one. The Nymph's Gift. Which for some reason I'm not wearing. Cloak of Resistance plus one. Wand of Magic Missiles. Wand of True Strike. Somewhere I have a Rapier, I believe. Glaive plus one. Great Club plus two. Bastard Sword plus one, Agile Rapier plus one, a Savage Bow, somebody needs to use that. Yeah, I have tons of stuff. Um, okay. But how do I... So, how does this work? Um... What happens if I click Offer? Whoa! Okay, so that's like every non-magical, non-useful thing that I have. Okay. So there's no such thing as gold in this game, apparently. <laughs> 
Uh, let's get the heaviest stuff. Camping supplies and rations. Breastplate plus one. How about a great axe? God, I'm never gonna... I'm never going to get enough stuff. Flower. Do I have, like, valuables of any kind? <laughs> Scorched fragment of a necklace. Is this seriously all I have to offer? Well, I can get one scroll at least for now. Is that seriously how I have to do all of trading? That's such a chore. It's such an absolute chore. Um, okay, well, fine. Ennio the Traveling Merchant. A tanned half-elf merchant gives you a polite bow. His thick chestnut hair shows a slight touch of gray at his temples, a sure sign that he's in the, his seventh decade. Mature, but not old enough for a half-elf. But uh, Mature, but not old age for a half-elf. I'm happy to welcome you, Your Grace. I am Ennio, wandering trader in curiosities. I've come to your lands recently and hope to stay here for a while until the roads call me again. Well, show me your wares. Well, he has cool stuff. But I can't really afford any of that. I need to... How do I... How do I just... Cast that spell on my... Uh... How do I just... Where's a healer that I can just talk to? Surely there must be one around here somewhere. There's all sorts of vendors here. Verdil. A young dwarf, red-haired, neat, and surprisingly clean-shaven, stands leaning against a sledgehammer. He's busy reading some book, but as you approach, he looks up and bows slightly. Greetings, Your Grace. I am Verdil, a blacksmith. What can I help... What can I do to help you? He has weapons and armor. Not surprisingly. Hasuf. You see a dark-skinned wiry man with a weather-beaten face and a happy smile on his face. He's dressed luxuriously, and his dark hair and neat mustache are exquisitely quaffered. Quaffed. The man bows to you, spreading his arms a little. Hasaf from Absalom is happy to welcome you, your grace. Come take a look at the best wares we traveling merchants have to offer. Please, come take a look. Alright, well, let's see what you have. Yet more. Weapons and armor. And rings. Wow. Wouldn't it be so much easier if it just dealt with gold <laughs> and not barter? Oh, Zarsi looks like a tiefling. The, oh, she is a tiefling. The tiefling girl looks as though she's made of springs. She cannot stand still for a moment. She nods her head, snaps her fingers, and taps her feet to an inner whirling song. Seeing you, she quickly waves her hand and breaks into a wide smile, and immediately starts jabbering. Your Grace, welcome! What do you want? Scrolls? I have them. You won't regret it. My suppliers bring them more scrolls for sale. If you manage to attract more mages to your lands, more mages, more demand, more goodies for you. So go build them libraries. We'll, be, we'll both profit from it. Uh, could you speak more slowly, please? Sure, sure, as you wish. All right, show me your wares. Scrolls and wands. Fine, fine. Are there any healers around? Ah, yeah, there's that body statue I saw before. 
just out in the middle of everywhere. There's a... What is this? Oh, that's the, uh, the throne room. I need a healer. I need a healer. Harim's out here standing at the cliff. Perhaps contemplating jumping off. Because he's always so depressed. More citizens. The Baron himself! Greetings, your grace! Are these all just plain old houses? Oh, there's a barn. A house. Don't mind me, citizens. I'm just looking around. I'm looking for a healer, in fact. Are there any healers in this town? I don't see any healers. Tread lightly. This place is just bustling with citizens and guards. I don't know why this healer won't heal my party. I have to buy scrolls. I mean, it feels like... Usable. How do I, um... I don't think I can use this scroll while I'm in town because it, I can't select. I can't select my dude. That's annoying. That's really annoying. Well, I don't... I don't really know what to do now, so <laughs> I'm gonna... Um... I can only heal one of my party. How do I heal those things? I don't really know how to heal the death's door condition. I might have to look that up. Some more houses. Oh, it's Jod. Wait, he can heal this stuff, right? Jod Kavkin? You, your grace. I need the help of a cleric. Well, you're, you're not much better. Don't you guys know how to heal anything? Oh, never mind. Well, as per usual, the internet is divided in its opinion on this. Um... I, I heard some talk, saw some talk, that if you just sleep in a bed, that the death's door condition goes away. So I'm going to attempt to find the bed that I found before, which I think was over here on the side somewhere. And then, you know, after a couple of people said, yeah, 100% for sure this will fix it, other people are saying, no, that doesn't fix it. So I am about to find out. For absolute sure. Hey, it fixed it. Awesome. So, I will work on leveling up all my characters. Oh, that's why I never saw... <laughs> that's why I never saw Octavia, because she was off the side of the screen. I never thought to scroll over to the right. Huh. So I'm gonna probably spend the next six hours leveling up these characters, because that's how long it takes. And then I will be back for more adventuring!